Apocalypse Gaming. Okie dokie, this is the one I had to cover in shrink wrap because I'd had it that long at the packaging burst. But we're now on to 68 in the old road, which is our second last build of the series. So let's get it opened up. I'll have a wee look at it and show you without all this reflection. What the picture of this one looks like. And I very much doubt you'll have heard a word of that due to the fizzle fizzle. So that's the one we're on to. 68 on the old road. So let's get a wee sprue tour of it. So that will be the base. It's the only thing it can be, I think. Maybe a floor. Looks like it'll be one of the floors. Recessed floor, possibly. Sidewall. Another wall door, possibly down there on the side. This looks to be the same as the other one, so there might be one on each side. Not looked at the instructions on this one yet. Those are nice windows. I think they go in the front that way. And another side entrance, I think, part. Other side for the front windows. I think that's the same again. More front window. Front and back part of it. That'll be the other side wall with the other part of the door. Step, step, step. Don't know, that'll be the roof part. There'll be parts for the roof. Don't know what they are. We'll find out. And more of the detailed stuff for the roof. I do like all this decorative carving. I'll need to be very, very careful with whatever I use there because that's not deep. That's not even a millimetre deep. So I don't want to lose that detail. I'd have liked to have seen that a wee bit deeper. So I would have. So I need to be well careful. But it's cool. Very cool. And that'd be them all. So let's get everything off the sprout. Well, I have to say, once again, these kits show how good they are because this is entirely together on a dry fit. Those bits I need, I can't put on because they need glued, but they're sitting where they would be going. So it looks damn good. It's a nice big piece. Excuse me, bits are falling off. So let's quickly whack out what I can and we'll get it built. Some of them might actually be a wee bit harder, mind you, to get out than they were when they went in. Because there was a wee bit of pressure to apply them, but we shall see. Yeah, I was fearful of this one. There we go. Had a wee flap there, I get panicked. As to what that was, but it's my top of the parts. So where we're at now is the order of what I'll need to build it in without gluing to the bottom of the base. So it's that out, that out, that out, and these. And into there. So we'll crack on and do that. So just like on our previous build, where I went all baldric and had a cunning plan, I'm going to copy the same idea. This one is a bit more complicated because it's not four walls, but seven walls or something like that. Four, five, six, seven, seven walls. 
but the same theory should work and from the dry build I know that it holds together with the three so if I can get my first three walls and the roof up I can then build this using that base plate as a structure to keep everything in place as I go along I just don't put any glue on the base plate because it's a seven walls I'm going to have to clean up a wee bit faster though and move a wee bit faster as I don't want the white glue starting to set because it was beginning to set just on the four walls the last time that bit harder to clean up. What I want to do is just along the roof surface again. Do get adherence. So back first. Suddenly, I can't do this, even though it's going to get all dead easy. The dry fit, there we go. Sidewall. Use that bottom slot just to help slide everything into place. That'll do for now till I get the other wall in place. You should have heard everything lock at the back there, which it has, as we can see is the zip edge joined together so now I want to put my middle piece in Again, just make sure we get the teeth the right way. Where's that joiner? There. That one I need. Put the wrong one. Just lift everything up slightly and drop it back into the base plate because the base plate is not glued down. We're just using it, as I say, as a place to hold everything as we go along. Oh. So 
and we've got the front of the building to go on. And it's all the teeth once more. So I don't have elastic bands that will go around this, but I actually do have corner joint straps which I'll probably need to grab out my tool cupboard because I've just realised, despite thinking you could use your toy corner grab tool joints, but you haven't got them out. Oh. I'll need to clean it down first anyway before I put them on, because they're very thick. So don't want to over tighten them. Did I put glue up there? I don't think I did, did I? No I didn't. And now we can't get that back in. Guys, I've got some glue on the bottom and I really didn't want glue down there but I'm getting careless. I think more about the camera than careful on what I'm doing so that'll need to come off of there and get that cleaned up promptly once I've got this in position. I'm not going to sh show you me doing the clean up because again it's just a damp brush take all the glue off and you don't need to watch that so that's what I'm going to do now. So then, I've actually got quite a few different clamps on this. Um, I'm just going to walk away and let this dry and set up and I'll come back to it a couple of hours, maybe even tomorrow now, and we'll take the rest of the build forward for there. But these are the corner ones I was talking about. I think they're framing clamps or something they're called, but it gives you the four corners and the pressure onto the four corners and then just some standard clamps across the front fascia. So that then should be more than long enough for my wee clamps. I thought, rather than just take them off and... Oh, how the hell did that get there? Um, take them off before I went back to the filming. I thought I'd leave them on because not everyone may actually have came across. I forgot how that one comes off. Suddenly brain fart. There we go. Not everybody may have seen one of these before. They are, I think they're called frame clamps. But basically they've got the four corner pieces and you tighten it all up and it holds your piece together. So all I do now is I unscrew it and then release the fabric and take it off. And it'll be the reverse. when I was putting them on. And because of the four plastic right angled corners, as we see, the clamp at sail as a right angle plus the three corners, and then you tighten the strap, it holds everything together nice and tight for you. That's how that works. I thought it'd be worthwhile exploring that and showing you, just in case.